Hi, uh, Chris Chinock here for Display Central. I'm at SID, where we've just heard uh, the a keynote address from Bill Buxton, who's a Microsoft, what, what's your title exactly? Principal researcher. Principal researcher. But certainly some, some sort of a visionary, I would say, because I, I love the talk, first of all. Uh, so why don't you just give us a very quick kind of recap of what your, your key message was to the display community. Um, the key message is really that first, displays are interactive. And if you take the interaction out of displays, you've, you're just treating users like a sponge and the market for sponges is very small yes. and, and already saturated. Uh, and the second, so to speak. Yeah, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always choose my words well, and uh, even accidentally. Um, and the second uh, is that it's far more important uh, to start thinking about devices, uh, displays and others in an ecosystem, mm -hmm. in an ecological way. And it's how things work together. And, the, and that means um, not just can I have it this way or that way, but how they make the transitions. Uh, that, um, that you can think about it, it, when I talk about the society of devices, is you, you think about all the language we use in sociology. What, what are the social mores of approach, of departure? What's a graceful approach? What's graceful departure? Mm -hmm. So that the behaviors of the transactions that I'm undertaking with the technology uh, which no longer are anchored in any single location, as I move from location and context to context, that the activity goes with me, but in a form that's appropriate to those changes in where I'm going. And you gave a really excellent example of your, your Windows phone going into your car and how you can interact with, with voice and text messages. So tell us about that interaction, because I think this was a great model. Yeah, see, well, I, I like examples that are already in our face, that in retrospect you realize, oh, I already knew that, I just didn't see it. Because yeah. it's all about optics. How do we change how we see what's in front of us? Because it's almost every, the best kind of innovation is what I would call surprising obviousness, right? Something, how do you recognize it? Something I've never, supposedly, it's a whole new idea, it's a whole new innovation. Yet I recognize it instantly, even though I've never seen it before. It's because you have seen it before, just not in that way, in that light. So the, the issue is this, uh, that we, we think we have a smartphone and if you ask anybody, they'll say the interaction model of the smartphone is touch screen and eyes. So it requires two hands and two eyes to be able to operate. Right. And that's the way it is. Well, we already know that if you interact that way with your smartphone while you're driving a car, you should lose your driver's license. <laughs> so what happens with Bluetooth? You come in your car, you throw your smartphone in the passenger seat, for example, and you drive away. And if the phone rings while you're listening to the stereo, it talks to the car and says, hey, uh, is the stereo on? Yep, okay, well, turn it off because we're going to have a phone call now. And by the way, can I borrow the speakers? And so you get the speakers and you have this conversation. And it's not going to use the microphone in the handset. It's going to use the microphone that's better than the car. Yes. And, and so on and so forth. And so you have the conversation and you're done. Now, if I want to initiate a call, I just push a button on the steering wheel um, or speak, and, and then I ask using my voice um, who I want to call, and, and I have a conversation with this woman who I've never met, and I, I call you. Yes. Eyes free, hands free. If you text me while I'm driving, um, it'll turn down the stereo. Uh, the same woman comes on and says, um, you have a text from Joe Blow, and uh, do you want, what would you like me to do with it? To read it or whatever? I said, yep. read it. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do? Delete it, save it, or respond? Okay, and so, okay, if I say respond, I give dictation, she'll transcribe it in her text, fire off the text, but read it back to me first to make sure she transcribed it right, which usually she does, and, and, and we're all good. Now, this is all really fascinating because, first, where's the phone? Right? right. And the answer to the phone is, if you say it's on the seat, you're wrong. Um, that's not the phone. Uh, you could say the car, or you could say everywhere, or I would prefer you to say, who cares? It's not about the phone. It doesn't matter. It's about functionality. If, if you're aware of where the phone is or what's actually doing what, it's probably a failure in design because that means there's been some intrusion that's forced you to know that to be able to operate the phone effectively or set your expectations. Sure. And so that's all kind of interesting because, it, in fact, only the SIM chip, the battery, and a little bit of logic in the Bluetooth uh, radio is what's being used in the handset. Everything else is in the, in the vehicle. Right. What's fascinating to me, though, is when I'm talking to you, park the car, turn it off, pick up the phone and walk out, there's a 100% transition yeah. in the interaction language of the phone. It goes from touch and uh, from speech in, speech out, to yeah. control, to touch and eye control. But also, there's about a 95% change in the local hardware handling that call. And, and that all should work seamlessly, of course. And, and, and it's completely seamless. Yeah. And what's, everybody talks about, you need consistency. Well, no. I have complete inconsistency of interaction language. I have 95% inconsistency with hardware. Yeah. And to, because of those inconsistencies, I have complete consistency of conversation. Yes. And, and it's that notion that 
Okay, well, most of the audience have uh, experienced that, but but now they should be every whenever they have a watch. Why can't this watch has a touchscreen on it? Uh, I have a watch from 1984 that costs ninety nine dollars with a capacitive touchscreen on it, with character recognition, so I can actually huh. write uh, um, an, a name in and get the phone number. Really? A, a store, th yes, that. That's like 19 Moore's laws ago. That's that's a factor of half a million less compute power than than I have today, and I still can't do it today. Yeah. Right? So for 99.99, you could buy a watch with a capacitive touchscreen and character recognition, and and today I still can't uh, send a tweet or re respond or get messages from my phone. My watch does not connect to my phone seamlessly. Right. Why? And I've got and I've got half a million times the compute power today than right. I had back then. And that, and that, of course, was one of your key messages. Yeah. We can't have a bunch of discrete devices that can't talk to each other. They all have to talk to each other. This is the next revolution. And, 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 yes, it, and, and the, uh, otherwise it's uh, decimation. It's revolution or decimation. <laughs> the industry will go stagnant and we'll have a serious uh, pullback. 